here live with Greg Benz. He is the amazing person that developed Lumencia, and we are super happy to have him. He is unbelievably the nicest guy. We had some major technical difficulties, and he stuck with us for half an hour. So thank you so much, Greg. And also, everyone, we are adventurers of the F-Stop from the Arcanum. And if you're interested to see what we are about in the Arcanum, then definitely check the link in the YouTube area for the Arcanum. It's a great place to increase your art. So, Greg, we will let Jamie take this over. And thank you so much. Now, Jamie, can you hear us? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, go for it. You guys go ahead and have some fun, and we'll listen <laughs> here. <laughs> well, like Janet said, Greg, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's a real honor to, to meet you. I know a lot of people have uh, been using your software uh, in the Arcanum and, um, and on the Internet, as I'm sure you're well aware with your different groups that you have out there. So, you know, I think one of the things, maybe just to give you a little background as to why I wanted to reach out to you, uh, I would say first and foremost, is is your application Lumenzia but you know the the second part of it was is that I noticed that you're a Minnesota photographer so uh, being from Minnesota myself I was like wow that's you know small world so I was like I gotta reach out and and, uh, and uh, see if I can get a hold of them and so so thank you for uh, responding and, and uh, uh, being able to, to have a conversation with us today Oh, absolutely! Thanks, thanks for having me. And and actually, I I didn't realize there was a large consortium in the uh, the Arcanum using uh, Lumencia already. So that's that's awesome to hear. Yeah, absolutely. You should see uh, some of our threads already uh, around that. And um, you know, a lot of um, the the program. Then I know you're familiar with uh, Trey Radcliffe and Curtis Simmons and and the folks from the Arcanum. I because uh, I went back and I I took a little. A look at uh, at your website, and I seen that you actually went to New Zealand and uh, were able to uh, to meet with those folks. So, and uh, do a, a workshop over there. So, uh, you you probably already know the, the founders. I, I say their names as if I know them personally. I don't, um, but you know, obviously uh, taking part in the, in the wonderful experience that is the Arcanum. So, um, just uh, I guess real quick, you know, one of the things that I, I wanted to talk about a little bit in your bio is that you know you. Uh, you've been a photographer for quite a while now. Uh, I've probably since the uh, early 2000s. Is is that right? It is actually, Jamie. Just uh, it's kind of funny as as you mentioned Trey and team. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this photograph on my back wall here. It looks kind of tiny with the webcam, but uh, that's Milford Sound. I actually shot that um, standing about 10 feet away from Trey. So. Oh wow! Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Uh -huh. So, so you you were asking me about uh, how long I've been a photographer. Was that the question? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. About fifteen years. Um, you know, probably you know the last seven or so, much more seriously. But uh, I, uh, for a while, was living over in London, and you know, kind of when you're living abroad like that, you want to document everything. I started shooting like crazy, and suddenly, uh, you know, hobby, you know, kind of was born from it and turned into maybe an obsession. I don't know. I love photography. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, and and one of the things too, I I, I think you're a Nikon user, aren't you? Uh, Nikon, I've got a Fuji, I've got a DJI drone, I've got the uh, Sony uh, uh, A7 uh, R Mark II, so uh, kind of kind of a little bit of everything, but uh, I shoot Nikon much more more than the rest. Do you have a favorite lens, just out of curiosity? The 14 to 24 f2, that thing is just amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome so, for super sharp and all. Yeah, because the reason why I had to ask is, you know, obviously, again, since you are from Minnesota, I've checked out a lot of your uh, photography uh, around Minneapolis, St. Paul, and uh, uh, on your website, you've got some some great shots there of, you know, um, the the skyline for Minneapolis uh, for one, and you know, you took a unique shot of the uh, the cherry and the spoon. Uh, I I don't think I've ever seen somebody take a photograph right up the Right, right down the uh, the spoon there. So that was that was completely different. And the reason why it was uh, meant something to me is because I was just there this summer and I took that, you know, that classic shot that everybody takes. And then all of a sudden I, I see that one. I was like, I never even thought to 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 shoot it that way. So yeah, it's funny how little little differences in your photography, just moving an inch here or there, sometimes 
it's a totally different photograph. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I was looking uh, again, and, uh, you know, my <laughs> doing a little research on you, you know, one of the things that I, I was looking at, too, was your workflow and, and how you you process uh, your your shots. So, um, you know, one of the things that I seen that you use was um, uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. You do a little, uh, I believe it's Photomatrix, uh, you know, do a little HDR in there. And um, but you, you're also using your own tool that you created, Lumenzia, and to do with uh, you know to deal with uh, luminosity mass. And so just being very new to it, uh, I've, I've only had it for a few months now. You know, there is a learning curve with it, but it, it is it's something that you're able to really dissect and be very precise with your photos. Um, you know, is I mean, what was what was the call for that? What what made you just kind of uh, see in that need? Um, you know, it's, it's funny. Actually, um, I first started dabbling when I was out with train team. Uh, Scott Cublin was one of the other guys there, and he kind of mentioned the idea of luminosity masks. Uh, we were just kind of chatting in the back of the bus one day, and, and uh, I just started a bit of a journey. But, you know, for me, I was always looking for better tools for um, either to make images more realistic or kind of local adjustments. Um, so I was doing a lot of HDR at that point using the, the NIC plugins. And, you know, if you think about HDR, right, you're generally creating kind of a, a global adjustment to the image. Mm -hmm. But if you still want to tweak, you know, the contrast in a building or how bright the sky is or little pieces of it, you still need to go into the layers in Photoshop to do that. And the traditional tools in Photoshop, they're kind of blunt instruments. You know, think about selecting the sky. If you use the wand, you just kind of get everything 100% or zero. There's no in-between. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of times when you make those selections, things can look Photoshopped. And so the idea of luminosity mass is that they have natural subtle subtlety to them. So you can, you know, you certainly can do things that are pretty extreme with a luminosity mask, but the idea is that you've got the, the ability to do things that are a lot more subtle. And so that's kind of what got me started down that path, was just looking for one more tool in the arsenal to take an image and instead of just adjusting everything because, you know, maybe the sky looks great but the foreground's not quite there, you know, start to pick out little pieces of the image. And the, the beauty of luminosity masks is it almost gives you a way to speak to Photoshop, right? You, you and I can look at an image and we'll see, you know, um, a rock in the foreground Photoshop just sees a bunch of pixels with a luminosity mask. You can kind of say, "Well, I'm I'm looking at these dark pixels. Let's go do something here." Right. Kind of a, Definitely like using a, a scalpel as opposed to a, you know a larger tool. To, I mean, like you said, with the global setting. So uh, it's it's very impressive. And I, I'm kind of curious as to your thoughts. I mean, one of the the questions that came up that we before we get into the tool and maybe have you ask you to do a, a maybe a quick demo of it is um, is did you ever think that when you built that tool that you would have the reaction that you that you're getting from from photographers out there that are using it and what they've been able to do with your tool? Um, you know, I wasn't sure what to expect. It's a niche community. Luminosity masking um, is amazing. And if you look at the top images on, you know, like 500px, you see all these amazing images and a lot of them do use luminosity masks. So you're able to create incredible images, but they're also very difficult. And so it's it's kind of a small community, and I really didn't know how many people would be into it and what kind of reaction it would get. But you know, I was really frustrated with my ability to um, use the tools because you basically are going into the channels palette, you're flipping back and forth, things are kind of cumbersome. Um, and so the idea of Lumenzia for me was really to create something that let you get the same results but with a lot less work and, and really in kind of a more intuitive way. Um, because when you're diving into the channels palette and doing all that, it's just all very cerebral. It's very left brain, and you're not exercising, you know, the right side of your brain and being artistic. And so, yeah, I wanted Lumenzia to be that tool that let me focus on the image and not on the technique. Um, and so I, you know, I, I certainly expected other people to get into it, but I, you know, I've been really excited. There's there's a lot of enthusiasm. And the fun part is um, we've actually got kind of a private Google Plus community for Lamentio users, and there's a lot of interactivity. I've uh, met up in person with a few folks who, who bought it. I'm going to see another guy uh, in Europe in a few weeks. Like, um, There's been all this interactivity, and uh, I end up learning a ton as a result. So I, I feel like it's a very much a two-way street. People are always sharing 
great ideas, and they might be ideas for Lumenzia, but they might just be other related things. So it's, for me, it's just been an awesome experience. I started Lumenzia back in February is when I first uh, put it out on the web, um, and in the last nine months, it's just been a, a fun ride. Awesome. So just a, a real quick question, because you, you had mentioned channels before. So I, I know you have... Uh, you have Lumenzia, but then you also have a, a free tool out there that just creates the the different uh, different channels. I mean, and, and so can you kind of speak to that? What I mean, what's how, how did you how, how do you expect um, you know users to use one and then use the other, or is it a combination of both, or is it just is it one or the other, or one did one come before the other? Um, well, that, yeah, yeah. Um, it was for the, I first started with with some actions and, and the free panel. Okay. And I was just trying to really in, in, engage on the topic and, and help people understand. So I've got all these tutorials online. They're all free. Um, the panel with all the, the channel-based um, actions is, is free. And you can do most things with that that you could do with Lumenzia. Some of them require a lot of additional steps. It, it kind of uh, depends. But the, the basic stuff you would do in channels, you can do with my free panel. So I don't, I don't want to cut anyone out of that. You know, I want to make sure people have a way to do it. And I still put out videos that show kind of the old way of doing things as well as the Lumenzia way. I don't want it to be just about Lumenzia. Mm -hmm. um, but for folks who do have Lumenzia, it's really just designed to be a lot more easy and has a lot of additional functionality. So there's no reason you would use uh, both. I mean, you, you could technically, but I don't know why you would. That's interesting that you mentioned that because, you know, we all learn differently. And, and, and I, when I found your free tool, I... I I was having a little difficulty getting the uh, the mass and the selections that I wanted, so I actually went into the channels and and pick and chose the one I wanted versus uh, having uh, you know using the dropper and finding it. So it, it's a little bit different, but I I completely understand. So thanks for the the additional context on that. But um, by chance, can we have you share your screen and and be able to kind of just give us a, a walkthrough real quick of of Lumenzia from your standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. Let's um, let me know if this comes through. If I did this right. Yeah, yeah, I can see your can see your screen. Perfect. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to pull up an image of Lumenzia just to do a little bit of a uh, chalkboard talk, if you will, here. So, um, you know, I, I think when when people first see this, I think some people have kind of commented like, "Wow, this looks intimidating. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on with your panel." help me understand what's here. So it might help to just do a quick panel itself. Um, so most of what you're looking at here, like this whole chunk here, these are basically presets. If you click on any of these buttons, you're going to get a, a preview of what Lumenzi is going to do. Um, so let me pull up an image. We can kind of uh, real time do a, a couple of different things here. Uh, it's just like a technology snafu day. Let's see if we can get <laughs> Lightroom to open an image here. Huh. Okay, there we go. Um, so if I go and I click on any of these different buttons here, I get a preview. So if you're using uh, my free channel-based uh, tool, then that you basically you'd click one button and you would get all of these letter values up top here um, as different options in the channels palette. But in Lumenzi, you just click on the one you want. So if I hit L2, what that means is lights, and it's sort of like a degree going from you know all lights to just the brightest lights when you go down. Um, so basically this background is trying to you know, illustrate the dark stuff, you know, getting a little lighter. These are kind of dark mid-tones, mid-tones, lighter midtones. So as you move left to right, the presets are getting brighter, and as you move top to bottom, they're getting more specific in the image. So you can you know, pick on whatever preset you want, and if you have a preset you like, you can run with it, um, or you can actually go in here. These, the, the preview is working through these adjustment layers, and you can modify them so you can make this more or less selective to color or tones in the image. So you, can, you can really go crazy to select anything you want. But so those are those are all kind of these buttons up above. Um, and that does include um, not just the channel-based options, but also the uh, letters and numbers here are basically kind of like an Ansel Adams style zone system. So you could pick you know, zone 0, zone 1, zone 2 throughout the image to get really precise. 
So those are also uh, presets. But if you um, want to make a mask that you know you just you don't know like is that really kind of a zone eight or zone six or you know I, I don't know. Then these other tools on the right here are going to help you pick them. These I call this the zone picker. So you can click on this and actually select what you want. So I'm just going to uh, kind of you know here's the unpreviewed image and let's say we wanted to select this bridge here. Well, we can just click on the zone picker and then we just simply have to click on the tone you want, loads it up here and say okay, and Lumenzi will automatically figure out what that tone was and build a mask around those tones. And this top one here is, is what I call the wide zone picker and the bottom one's the narrow zone picker. So if I pick the, the bottom one, I could go in and instead pick that same tone and you'll see that before I had a lot of shadow values and this one's going to be a little more specific. So it's just giving you a couple of different ways of picking things out of the image uh, automatically without having to necessarily know what you want. So just different ways of, of working with, with that. Um, and then the last way you could create a mask is through this uh, vibrance or saturation. Uh, and I can show you that, but, it, but all these other presets are based on luminosity or the brightness of the pixels. These are actually based on how much color is in the pixel. So a saturation mask is going to find the pixels in the image that have high saturation, so colorful things in the image. And then vibrance is the exact opposite. So there's not much in this image that's actually highly saturated. Uh, vibrance is the exact opposite. And the, the reason you would use one of these masks is the, uh, let's say for example you want to make a vibrance adjustment um, but only to the blue color in the image. Well you can't do that in Lightroom, you can't do that in Photoshop. There's color specific saturation but there isn't color specific vibrance. And so you can use a vibrance mask to actually help you do that. Uh, or conversely a saturation mask is great if you want to take something that's really saturated and desaturate it without necessarily desaturating other tones of the image. So just kind of color specific selection, just another way of working with these masks. So I'm going to kind of clean this up uh, and so just kind of starting at the beginning. So, so I was showing you these are all the different ways you could actually create a selection. Normally to do that you'd be going in the channels palette and, and kind of doing a lot of things to find the selection you want. But here you just click on the one you want so let's say we wanted to adjust the sky and so I can just click and if that's the selection I want and usually what you're looking for is something that shows a good selection of what you want to work on but separation of everything else. So I've got the sky is all selected but the buildings aren't so that's probably a pretty good selection. I could try you know one more here and I can see the buildings are a little bit selected, the bridge is a little bit selected so if I work through this I might be adjusting the buildings as well so I'll stick with this lights three and when I have something I like I can then go down below here and uh, we'll do the, uh, the old chalk talk again here so um, down below here anything in this bottom area here these are all basically all things you can do um, so any of these that have an orange color to them will take that preview and load it as a mask essentially so if this is the mask that I want to use I can then click on what I want to do. So if I hit curve, I'll get a curves adjustment layer with that mask. And so that mask is exactly the preview we had just a second ago. So that's the whole idea of doing the preview up above and then to load it. And so now I have just a default curve with this luminosity mask on it. I'm going to I'm going to turn off the mask for a second. And you know, if you were to just adjust contrast, right? You're you're adjusting everything in the image. Mm -hmm. But if we turn on this luminosity mask, and now when we adjust it, you're going to see that the, the adjustments are restricted to those areas that are masked. So if I bring this down here quite a bit, you can see that this adjustment layer is doing a nice job of bringing color back into the sky, but it's not you know, punishing the shadows. And obviously, when we look at the mask, it's not just up here. I've got other stuff going on down here. So I can do other things to refine this mask to make it more specific to the sky. I can paint out the bottom where I can put a mask on this mask. Um, so there have been a lot of ways that you could, could play with this. So if we if we took this back um, and wanted to be more specific to the sky, uh, let me just get rid of this layer. So that same L3, uh, if I load up my lasso, I can basically 
Elementia where I want it to operate. So I can just draw kind of a rough selection. And what's going to happen is it's going to take, and I'm going to make sure I get this corner here, it's going to take just this part of the mask and essentially kind of ignore uh, the rest down here. And it does it by feathering this. Um, so it may select a little bit down here. We'll see it. That's something you can adjust if you need to. But if I hit curve now, it's going to load up that mask. And it, it, as I mentioned, it did get a little bit of a selection here, so you could easily just take a paintbrush. If I load up a black brush and just knock that out if I wanted to. But now I've got a selection that's just the sky, and so when I adjust this, the foreground's untouched. And so that, that's kind of the idea, the, the, the preview and loading that, where you now can very quickly get to adjusting the areas you want. And you can even further refine this. There's um, the group tool lets you put a mask on the mask. So it's basically the combination of these two things is your, your final mask. So if I were to start, you know, maybe I didn't want to adjust this area, I could start, uh, make sure I paint on the right mask here. Um, if I start painting this here, I'll take my opacity up a little bit. I'm basically going to avoid anything in that top area. So now when I start to adjust, we can see I've knocked this out. So it's the combination of these two things. Uh, and the, the beauty of having it as separate masks is if I have a luminosity mask that I really like, but I don't know where I need to apply it, by keeping them separate, I can you know go back and non-destructively um, click on the right mask here, I can go paint this back in. So I'm essentially painting this mask back in. So I can very quickly add and remove any adjustment I want to any part of the image. And if I get to a point where I'm knocking this back out here, if I like this and I want to combine this, I can just click ungroup and Lumens is going to co combine those, which is kind of a nice learning tool. So this is the combined mask where we made that original selection that we painted this out, and then the mask on the mask to knock this out. And I know I'm kind of throwing a lot of things at you at once, but I think the, the point is that you've got a lot of different tools to start with a preset and then modify it in different ways to really target what you want. And, and the beauty of that is then you can do any sort of you know, tonal adjustment or hue saturation adjustment or, or really any layer you want. Uh, you can apply this to um, blending images for example, uh, you can do kind of a manual HDR and take different exposures and manually blend them through luminosity masks uh, in here. And, and, and the last bit, and I'll let you start asking some questions here. The last bit, these additional tools, there's a built-in dodging and burning tool, uh, vignetting and sharpening. And I'll just kind of quick show those. Um, and all of these will respond to luminosity masks as well. If you wanted to vignette just particular tones, you could. But, um, for example, the vignette here, if I wanted to vignette this bridge and part of the skyline here, I could just draw a rough selection where I want it, and when I click a vignette, it's going to automatically create a vignette around that area. And I'll just crank up the opacity here so you can sort of adjust this to taste. But it's a completely custom vignette. I can even change the, uh, the feathering on it so I can you know, really get it to what I want. So, you don't have to stick with just a circular vignette. You can make any vignette, any vignette you want very quickly with, with that tool. Or um, there's a built-in sharpening tool, which is essentially has a high-pass algorithm if you're, um, if you're trying to adjust landscapes or a uh, surface blur option if you're, you're trying to do portraits. And then um, there's the, uh, the dodging and burning tool, which is going to just very quickly set up a dodge and burn uh, layer for you to start adjusting this, where this gets really interesting is you can use it through a luminosity mask. So I can take this preview, click on dodge and burn, and now I've got a luminosity mask on a dodge burn layer. And if I start, you know, darkening things up through this luminosity mask, I can control the tones here, but it's not spilling over into other areas. It's just wherever I've masked the image. So it's kind of like... Um, bumping with bowlers. You know, you, you're, you're not going get to get a gutter ball. It's going to keep you <laughs> inside the lines. Um, so I know I'm throwing a lot at you. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of give maybe a, a broad sense of the panel and, and um, give you a chance to ask me some questions on, you know, what's of interest to you. 
Well, it's definitely, you know, the tool is phenomenal. I mean, just even watching this short demo, I mean, you know, the one thing is I noticed, too, is that you highlighted the sky, and um, and you can do your adjustments there, but, you know, uh, when you photograph a sky, you know, sometimes you want to add a lot of character to it or, or uh, kind of... Um, exaggerate the character that's that's in it and I think one of the things that I've been able to use your tool with is if, if I've got different um, shades of clouds and, and uh, just regular sky I'm able to modify that to my my taste and, and this tool is phenomenal in, in being able to do that so that's that's awesome but I, I think uh, to your point in, in regards to, to, the, to the questions and, and because you have the panel open um, you know one of the one of the first questions that we got was you know what? How is the color group tool um, different to the color selection tool in in Photoshop, and and what advantages does it offer? Sure, and and you're actually looking at my prototype of the next version of Lumenzia that'll come oh. out in the next week or two. So it's now called Color Mask. Oh. But, so essentially, um, let me pull up a different image to demo. Um, so this would be a good example. So. The idea of the color mask here is, yeah, I was showing you how I adjusted the sky based on the brightness, but you know sometimes you need to, you may have uh, different colors in the sky that are similar brightness. So for example, uh, this image here, you've got a, a blue sky and a yellow building, and when we start looking through the different luminosity masks, there's not a lot of separation there, and so you need some way to bring color information into it. So let's say I loaded this up on a curve and then I use this to darken the sky a bit here and so you can see it's it's not just hitting the sky it's also kind of messing with the building here so what you can do is click on the color mask and it's going to give you a way to then start clicking on the colors you want so I'm just going to shift click and you can see that I've got a nice selection of the sky and I could spend more time on this, but essentially the building's not really selected, and I could, you know, kind of knock a few things out here to get it maybe a little bit better. But when I have a selection that looks pretty decent, I say OK. It's going to do that same mask the mask operation. So this is my, you know, lights three, right? So my light tones, and then this is my color mask, which is essentially my blue tones, and it's the combination of the two that will get adjusted. So it's just going to be the light blue stuff. And when we turn this on and off, we can see that the building's not affected, but if I turn this mask, if I just disable it, we can see that that mask is basically protecting the building. So this is just a nice, clean way to target the sky there. And if I ungroup this to kind of see that combined effect, so we've got that same exact adjustment, but now it's all done through a single mask. Mm -hmm. It looks like this. So it's just really hit the sky there. And like I said, we could spend more time to fix this, the beauty of it is once you have a nice separation on the edges, I can paint this away very easily. I don't have to be careful because I've got this little black buffer zone. None of these selected tones really touch each other. So, you know, even if I want to manually fix it, that's very easy to, to do that. So that was that's the idea of the color mask. Your question was, well, how is that different from the uh, the color range tools? Is that is that was that your ultimately the question? Yeah. So if you use this color range tool, you're getting that same interface, and you can go through, and you know you can click on the different parts of the image. Um, but what you're going to do, let me uh, click on something more useful here. So once we start clicking this, when we say OK, we're now left with a selection. So I could then, you know apply this to um, one of these by just, you know, clicking on a group and then, you know, I could apply that there. So, you know, it'd be a few extra steps to, to do that if I want to. Um, you know, so this tool I think is just meant as kind of a speed option um, to, to really do a few things very quickly. It will, you know, add a group if it needs to because there's, you know, something already on here. If it's on a layer that doesn't have a group, it'll just apply the mask right here. So the whole panel is uh, it's built in JavaScript, so because it's programmed, it's, it's intelligent, and it'll respond accordingly, so it tries to help you manage through any sort of errors or, you know, do things in the most efficient way. So, you know, it's not that you couldn't do this on your own. 
um, but this color mask tool just gives you a, a little bit of a, a quicker way of doing it. And when you do it with that color mask tool, um, let me step back a couple uh, here. You know, so if we did this with the, the color mask, you'll see that it also pops up and, and it's nicely labeled. You know, so as we're working, Lumenzia is marking what you've got. So this is a light three curve and this is a color mask and it, it tries to help you keep track of what you've done, even if you change it. So maybe we want to make the sky um, a little bit different. So I could go and instead say I'm going to use a lights four selection and if I hit the mask tool, it will remask this layer and rename it. So what was lights three is now lights four and we can see that that's what's on this layer. So it's just meant to be really dynamic and, and give you a quick way to, to get to whatever you want. Yeah, that, that, is, that is awesome. <laughs> that is very impressive. Um, you know, I think uh, another question that we had, Greg, was um, do you have any, uh, you know, I don't know what the future roadmap is, and we've seen, uh, you know, we're looking at 1.6, what well, 1.5 is out there, um, but do you have any, um, any uh, tips or workflow for, for people that are colorblind? Um. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting question. Um, I, I'm not colorblind in any way uh, that I know of. Um, but, you know, just in, in speaking with other photographers who are, you know, I've heard a couple of themes where people will tend to use the, uh, the info palette. So if you use, like, the eyedropper, you've always got color information, whether you're looking at RGB. Um, you could pull up, you know, lab values if that's your thing. Um, you know, different ways of just numerically working with the image. Um, and so you really would see the difference between, you know, this area and this area by looking at the A and B, which are color in, in the lab values. So I know some people who certainly um, just address things numerically, whether that's to know that skin tones should always be in a certain range or whether that's just simply to help see any variability in the image. Um, you know, with Lumenzia, obviously that color mask tool, that's one way that you could look for differences in color as well, you know, it's just you know, trying to take the colored information and remap it to black and white. So, you know, another thing you could do would just be to add, um, you know, for example, like a, a black and white layer to it, um, you know, throw this on top, and I could then start to say, you know what, I just want to be looking more at the greens. I can start to, you know, knock out the other colors, and, and you know, that'd be one way of kind of looking for color information. Um, and you could even, you know, set this to be more based on luminosity, um, and so now you're, you're sort of making brightness adjustments by color channel. Um, I mean, those are just a few ideas kind of off the top sure. of my head, but I, I think ultimately um, you can either work with numbers if that's your thing, or you can use Photoshop with other adjustments to turn colors into things you can see by, you know, changing the brightness or looking at black and white or something like that. So whether you're a visual person or a numeric person, I think there's a few different ways to approach it. Okay. So I only have one more question, and then I know Janice is, uh, he's, she's going to have some questions for you here soon, too. But, you know, again, doing my research on you a little bit before, uh, before our meeting, um, you know, one of the things, and, and this is less to do with the application, but I, I want to make sure I ask it. You, you used to have a, uh, a, um, a for photographer section on your website, kind of where you walk through your workflow and, and that maybe you know, and I know you have a gear uh, section on your on your website now. But is there any thoughts of bringing that back? I mean, you know, for, you know, novice or entry level photographers are always interested in workflow. I mean, I guess even the seasons seasoned ones are as well. So, um, yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. Can, you, can you can you see my screen here? Yes. Yes. So I've got if you if you go to my site, the 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 heading says luminosity masking, but underneath it. Um, there's information on Lumenzia, there's my free actions and other tutorials, uh, then there's this other tips and tricks, and if you click to that, you're going to see other tutorials that I have here, and there's, you know, multiple pages of uh, previous work that I've done in here. So um, I don't think anything you're, you're asking about is, is gone from the site, it may just have moved to a different area. Got it. And by the way, that car that you found in the alley in Cuba, that, that car is, that's very impressive. Oh, thank you. 
So I'll hand it over to Janice now, and uh, and I think she's like I said, I think she's got additional questions for you. Yeah. Well, actually, Ian has something. So Ian, go for it. <laughs> Hi, Greg. You're right. Um, I just wondered if you could uh, give us a bit of a preview of that new range tool in one point. Oh. Sure, sure. I haven't played with it enough, so I apologize. This probably won't be the world's best uh, demo here, but uh, we'll kind of wing it. So this is something that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, so I mentioned this this color picker. The idea here is that when you um, use one of these, you pick a single tone, and it builds a mask around that tone. So for example, um, I might use that to you know, pick the sky, and then I pick this tone of blue, so it'll pick a little bit darker and a little bit brighter. Uh, but it's not it's not that particular. Um, whereas the range tool, you can actually tell Lumenzia what tones you want to include. So if I click on the range tool, it's just going to tell me, hey, you know, you're going to pick the darkest and lightest tones. You're you're selecting the range you want to work on. And so just like the the zone picker, you get a color picker. So I can pick a a darker tone down below here, and I say OK. And now I'm going to do a second selection, so I can pick a lighter tone. And what will happen is it's going to create a mask that kind of runs the gamut between those zones. And so now I've got this selection down here. So obviously these are brighter tones. I didn't, you know, pick that lighter area there. But it just gives you a way to fairly precisely pick different tones in the image. And the way it's built, um, all these buttons in Lumenzia have uh, little tool tips. And I definitely recommend uh, hovering over them and see there's a lot of hidden options. I tried to give you the things you'd use most, but give you extra options. You can see on the range tool, the uh, the command buttons as well as alt and option uh, give you ways to make this range a little bit more or less specific. So when I, um, you know, if I, if I were to hold the shift key and do that same thing, it would be a little more generous. It would include a little bit more of the highlights and a little bit more of the shadows. Or if I, you know, held down the, uh, the command key, it'd be a little bit more tight. It might start knocking more of these areas out. So it kind of gives you a, a few different ways to uh, pick a range of tones. And the idea that I had with that is more about situations kind of like this where you might want to pick everything from these dark tones up through these lighter tones here and then make some sort of adjustment across this building face, whereas none of the other presets necessarily give you a selection of those areas. Um, and I didn't go through this, but the, the way that all these presets and all these options in Lumenzi are built are essentially there's a, a black and white conversion and then a curve on top of it. So you're basically previewing by looking through a couple of adjustment layers. But you can tweak these. So in the range tool, what you're getting is a selection. So you know these were the two points I selected. And then it's going to give you a little bit of extra because you always want to feather things in luminosity mask. If you don't have a feather, then you might as well be using you know, one of the other old school tools like the Magic Wand that you know, are really kind of harsh. But you can open up these curves and adjust them. So I could you know, make this selection more generous or a little more tight. You can very quickly tweak these masks or you can even use, you know, like any other curve, these adjustment tools. So as I hover over the tool, I could say, you know what, I want to have less of this tone. I just click and drag it down. I'm kind of knocking that out. It works better if I just use the points I need, but I can take this and I know, you know where that was. So I could you know, maybe decide that I want to bring up you know, this part of the image uh, just by, you know, so you can interactively uh, adjust the masks. And obviously this is a, a totally useless mask, but if I did want to use it, I could now just click on one of these other options, you know, maybe a color adjustment layer, and it's going to load that up um, onto <laughs> this new layer. So I have you know, I got that interactive preview. I can completely customize my luminosity mask uh, and then load it up onto a layer. Um, so, you know, my, my thought with the range tool being that you've got a few different ways to select the tones you want, and probably 90% of the time I would just, you know, click and go. But if you do want to tweak it and really get specific, then you've got that power to do it. And, and the range tool is kind of nice because it only has a few points on that curve, so it's pretty easy to, uh, to adjust it. That's cool. That's cool. That looks really good. You know, one of the things that I really love about your your program is that um, I've used masks for a long time, but what I like is that you've done it where we can 
use it and then also group it so our files are not like gigs worth of you know file space in my computer so I think that's one of the benefits of Lumencia and then also you've given us tools that can we can quickly go in and we know what we want so I use your picker all the time and then I go in and change make my adjustments so I can go out and photograph it's it's a great tool and I see two of me for some reason all of a sudden um, sure. but anyways I just wanted to let you know that um, I really appreciate that the size itself you have reduced our file sizes so that is a huge benefit compared to a lot of other um, channel programs that I've seen or channel software and stuff like that. Yeah. So Do you guys want to see a couple of examples of work I've done? Because I've, I've shown like bits and pieces of the tool, but I, if, if someone hasn't seen this before, it might be nice to just kind of see what, what things look like. Yeah, I think that would be beneficial, especially to somebody that has not actually produced anything from Lumencia. So that would be really good for everybody. Yeah. So, um, for example, um, you know, th this is a shot I took of the uh, the skyline uh, here in Minneapolis, and I made some adjustments in RAW uh, as well as Lumencia to create this finished image. And so, hopefully, I uh, pulled this off of my. Uh, my external drive correctly and we can open it up. Um, but so what I'll do is I'll, I'll work on these images and uh, shoot, um, let's see if I have the original in here. I, I uh, was playing with this image in lab color as well so I kind of made it a smart object and was doing some other stuff to it. Yeah, this is not the image I wanted. Sorry, let me pull a different example. Sorry about that. So let's Are see. you kidding me? You waited a half an hour for us. We can wait for as, as long as you want to take. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know everyone's got things to do, and it's the weekend, so I don't want to pull people up here. But uh, yeah, so when I'm working on things with um, luminosity masking, Lumenzia, um, you know, I really, one of the things I love about luminosity masking is because everything is essentially in layers in a mask, it's completely non destructive. And one of my personal goals as a photographer is just to be continuously getting better. I want to always look back at my work and feel like I've improved. And a lot of times that means going back to an image and, and retouching it. So it's kind of nice that, you know, with the layers, I can always go back and, and make little tweaks instead of, you know, trying to start over. Um, so my images, you can see, obviously um, can have quite a few layers in them when I play with them. Here was the... Uh, the original image here and then the final adjustment and I know this looks like a lot but a, many of these are actually uh, not that many steps um, and let's actually collapse this a little bit so I showed you guys that ungroup option but let's uh, let's go ahead and just kind of merge this down and you'll notice the file size here this is 1.4 gigs now but as we uh, go through this the image is going to get quite a bit smaller as you start combining masks and that was a warning from Lumenzia. It'll try and save you from yourself if you're taking steps that could potentially alter the image. It's going to let you know so you can check for that, but I didn't see any change there. Um, get rid of a few more here. So a lot of these, you can see I've got these dual layer uh, set up. Actually, let me undo that for a second. Um, because, for example, here I wanted to work on the, he the headlights. So I've got a selection that's pretty good for the headlights, but it selects a lot, a lot of other stuff. So then I apply on top of that just a quick brush to these areas. And what that gives me is this final mask that uh, we'll have in a second here. Um, so it's just those headlights. Um, so, so that's why I do these two masks. One is kind of the luminosity mask, and the other is me applying it locally. But so um, we took this down to, what is this, 135 meg, I guess, versus the 1.4 gigs. It really can kind of compress things quite a bit. But essentially, um, just kind of building this thing up here, so starting with the original image, um, I've got a quick, uh, uh, shoot, let me do this the right way. Uh, I guess I have to manually turn these off here when it's in a group. Um, uh, 
So we can see here I made kind of a, an adjustment. You see the shadows in the car. So that was just you know quick selection of darks five, and then applying a curve to it. And if you look really closely, you're going to see that there's a couple points at the bottom. That's something Lumenzia does for you in uh, traditional luminosity masking. If you try and apply a curve, um, your shadows can get kind of muddy. So Lumenzia is kind of giving you a little help by applying that uh, point for you there. Um, then on top of this, I've got this vibrance adjustment here. And what this is, is I'm sure it's in the reds here. You can see I've adjusted the uh, reds with a hue saturation luminosity layer, but I applied it through a vibrance mask. When you use a vibrance mask on an HSL layer, you've basically turned this into a color-specific vibrance control. So this is, even though this slider says red saturation, this is red vibrance, uh, and that brings out more of that color in the brick there. Uh, then next here, I use the zone picker. This is zone D. Um, with a little bit of a contrast curve. And let's kind of quick see what this is doing here. Uh, you probably can't see that online. It's a very subtle adjustment that I was doing more for uh, for print. Uh, next up here, you see the, uh, the grill of the car. Um, so I've just got a, a zone 4 selection of the grill, which is this area here. So very targeted adjustment to really bring out that chrome. Uh, and then next up here, uh, is basically a vignette that I did uh, through a zone mask. Uh, and the reason I would do something like that is if you just darken everything on the edges and you, and you crunch the shadows, sometimes things look murky and you lose detail. So sometimes I like to apply a vignette more to the midtones of the highlights and preserve and protect the shadows. I think it's just a little bit more natural look. Uh, and then here uh, is some dodging and burning I just did manually to uh, darken down the stone. Um, let's see, what are we hitting here? This is also, yeah, you can't really see that online, too subtle. Um, this one, when I did the demo before, was really popular. Um, I did a selection that you can see the mask. I used the zone picker to get a good selection of the, the reflection in the glass here. And with that, I can then dodge and burn. And look at that. Let's just kind of zoom in for a second here, the reflection. So here's the original and then dodging and burning through it, you bring back all that detail and just have a, a much nicer looking image. And obviously if I had shot this with a polarizer, that would have been better. But I was just kind of walking down the street, shooting handheld, and I didn't have a tripod with me. Um, so taking this image and cleaning it up, I don't know how I would have done that without using a luminosity mask. I'm trying to get a selection that would darken this and not the other areas there. Um, Next up, this is uh, also pretty subtle. Let's skip that one. Um, here's those headlight adjustments. So see the headlights here are kind of a little bit bland. But then when I turn this on, see all that extra detail that's coming out in the headlights? So it's just a kind of a contrast adjustment in the headlights there to bring out a little more detail. Uh, here's another vignette I applied. So sometimes I vignette in a few different stages, just kind of depending on what I want. Uh, here's just a traditional layer to bring out a little bit more of the uh, tone and the purple, kind of darken up some of that dust on it. It's obviously, um, you know, if I had the time with this, I would have tried to wipe this car down with a rag. It's a very, very dusty car. Um, and then as I often do, I've got uh, use of Color Effects Pro on top, so use the, uh, the Nick tool to bring out some additional uh, detail in the image. Uh, did a little bit of uh, cloning. You can see the hand prints that some kids put on the on the dusty, um, uh, sorry, the, the dust there. So just kind of cleaning that up, uh, adding a texture to the image, um, which, you know, again, is, is playing with some luminosity mask inside the texture to just be more targeted. And then this is the uh, Lumenzia sharpening option to just bring a little more detail. And you can see it's, you know, kind of just making the background a little bit more gritty the way that I processed it here. So it's, it's a lot of different um, pieces here, but as you think about stepping through the image, you know, bit by bit, you know, you can really just kind of look at the image and start to dissect that, you know, I want to darken this down, and I want to bring out some more detail here, and I want to get rid of these reflections. And so each of these steps is just, you know, one little bit going down that path to, uh, to clean up the image.
how, how did you add that texture to it? Um, so I added the texture manually. Um, so a couple of things going on here. So um, you can see I put a few adjustments on top. So let's turn this off for a second here. So the texture is really a combination of these uh, these three layers here. The key is that I've got this texture and then I put a blur on it. So if we were to just look at the texture itself, I don't know if I have a good way to do that, but this texture um, has a, it, it, well, here we go. You can see um, the texture being applied to the car when I turn off this mask. I basically was masking out parts of the detail on the car where I don't want to have the texture applied to the glass or you know, to the chrome and the shiny parts of the car because it, it's just adding noise on the subject. I want the texture to be more about the background, but because that texture has color to it, I can't just mask it out because if I do that, these areas are going to start to adopt the color of the texture, that yellow glow, and these and this won't, so I'd, I'd have some color error. So the way you can deal with that is turn this into a smart object, add a blur to it, and then you can essentially uh, remove that so that the texture is contained here. Let's see if we can see if we zoom in a little more here. Um, hard to see. It may just be kind of slow because it's a large image trying to catch up. But essentially, I've blurred this image, um, but only in the areas where I don't want the texture to add noise. So by blurring it, I'm keeping the color of this texture layer, but getting rid of that noise that it's adding. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, that's a great idea, Greg, because what I've done is just um, take texture and then I do a, a point on the, you know, do a selection of just the color, you know, and paint it. But this is like so fast. I think everything that you do is makes things so fast. I, I It's a great way. I'm, I've never played with a texture like this before, so I will definitely do that. Great tip. Yeah, I think the watch out when you demo is you know, moving through a lot of steps quickly. It could be a little overwhelming, so anyone who wants to go deeper on this, I've got a bunch of videos on YouTube where I try to pick one or two things and, and spend a little more time with it, so I apologize if you know everyone's at different levels, so I'm trying to kind of pick a, a middle speed. I'm sure there's folks out there who are still trying to figure out what a luminosity mask is. Well, that's okay, because I'm going to give the links to everybody, and then they can, um, you know, take their time. But what I really want to say is that if somebody has not done this or played this way with your tools, I highly recommend, I don't even say go do the free stuff, everyone. Uh, Greg has, it's not, how much is the, the Lumensi? It's not even that much. I, you, it's it's I 40 it. for the panel, and it includes uh, two extra hours of tutorials on, Lumenzia, which also shows a lot about just general luminosity masking. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's so, um, I mean, it's totally worth every little dime. That, you know, I, I, I personally think I would have paid more for it just to let you know. <laughs> 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 but so uh, I really highly recommend everybody going and checking out his website and definitely um, Try Lumencia. The free stuff is great, Greg, but really um, the panel that you have created for everyone is just absolutely amazing and so easy to use once you get the hang of it. Just take some time, watch the videos. Greg goes into detail, and then we um, you, you'll have so much fun to be able to post-process your images. Very, very amazing tool. Can't say it enough. Um, it's already getting to 2.30, so, I mean, you stayed an extra time. Do you, anybody else have any questions for Greg while we got him? It's all quiet in the house, Greg. <laughs> yeah, James, there, was a, there was a question that, that Jamie had surfaced. I'll maybe throw this out because um, okay. I'm sure you can, and there's probably a lot of people who do HDR. Um, and so there was just kind of a question of, like, how would you use luminosity masks with HDR? Um, so I won't process this, but let's say that we were going to take this, you know, series of brackets, and we wanted to, to merge them. So you could certainly merge them uh, with an HDR program. You could also use luminosity mask to blend them. I, we haven't gone through that here, but, but uh, I, 
often we'll use the bubble. So if I did an, an HDR here, uh, I could then use luminosity mask. Um, I, I could, I, I could, I'm sorry, there's a bit of an echo coming through. Um, but I, I could use the uh, HDR tool to, to bring the colors back in the image, you know, get my highlights and shadows to look good. But then with luminosity mass, I could start to do things like really make this bridge, you know, stand out and, and pop in the image. So uh, it's definitely not uncommon for me to use both HDR and luminosity masks um, in, in quite a few images. Yeah, I've noticed that you have a real quick tool. I think Kathy has a question. Kathy, do you have a question for? No, I, I didn't have a question. I was just messing around. Oh, okay, because you 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 were the the what is the person that was doing the feedback? <laughs> I was I was oh, actually I sending you a message right now. Um, yeah, I like that you can put you you have a tool on there that you can just automatically merge it all together. That's really amazing for the HDR. That's really cool. Christopher, do you have? I think someone, he's typing right now, so... Oh, he has no questions. All of the questions have been answered. Awesome. All right. Well, there, again, there was, Greg... Oh, do you have another question, Jamie? Well, there was, there was uh, from our list, uh, there was one other one, uh, and just kind of like... Um, so, we all started learning photography <clears throat> at one point, Greg, and I was just curious as to just real quickly, if you had one tip to give to somebody that was beginning out and, and starting uh, photography, what would you tell them? Um, shoot a lot. Uh, you, know, I, uh, you know, people say to me, oh, you have a great eye, you're, you're so amazing at photography, and honestly, I think anyone who, uh, who spent as much time doing this as I do would, would be at least as good, if not, not a lot better than me. So it's really just get out there, find some other people who are passionate about it, and, and go shoot. Is I think that's you know, the best way to learn, being around other people and just going and doing it. Great tip. So, Greg, this has been very educational. Thanks for coming out and uh, spending some time with us and, and showing us the tool and, and giving us a little background on yourself. We really appreciate it. And, um, Again, we'll be uh, we'll be watching your website and following you on on social media there to uh, to see what comes next. So, awesome. Well, hey, any anyone who has more questions or wants to know more, please uh, drop me an email, shoot me something on Google Plus, Facebook, whatever. Uh, I love when people reach out to me, so it's uh, it's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. So wh where is everybody? I'm just kind of curious here. United Kingdom. Yeah. Whereabouts? And then Australia. Australia. Go ahead, Warwick. Where are you from? Australia. <laughs> We're hitting all different hours of the day here. Yeah. Yeah, and Christopher, he has some. His his throat's messed up. Um, Christopher, was it uh, Sweden? I have, Mike, the, it's really awesome because the cohort is from all over around the world. So we have Belgium, United States, um, like you say, Australia, and New e England, and I mean, it's, it's Italy. It, you know, it's just like, it's so much fun to be able to see everybody's images from a, around the world. And it, it inspires us to do new things, too, just by visualizing the different um, photographs. I don't get to see a lot of this stuff. Like um, Dirk is from Belgium. He will be watching this later. He's the one that's colorblind. So, you know, it's it's awesome that he, he loves to photograph, but he wants to, you know, find out tools to improve his images, you know, because he's colorblind. But it is, it's a lot of fun. The Arcanum's a blast. Um, we just have different challenges, and I really I think it's a good thing that, you know, Trey and the other CEOs have started this. It's only been about a year and a half or something. And so it's, it's. Um, I mean, I, I got into it. I was selling my stuff already before, but I needed to push myself, and I felt like I didn't have that challenge anymore. So I actually joined the Arcanum as an apprentice just to push it and, you know, step out of the box a little bit. And then um, Andy, A.D. Wheeler, he was my, uh, or still is, is, you know, my mentor, and he asked if I would 
be interested in becoming a master and at first I was kind of debating about it because I don't really like the master thing I just like I, I mean I feel that these people are like my family now but it's all about photographing and 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 pushing yourself out of the comfort zone so when Lumencia came up which is I think one of Jerry she's um, our manager she kind of manages things I think she's the one that brought it into us we all jumped into Lumencia and just been having such a blast and like I say you know we're all around the world so it's so much fun to see the different images that have been um, worked on and a lot of it has been through uh, your your program Greg so it's really cool to have you here with us oh, that, Very that's fun. Awesome. have there been uh, I mean with those many people on the any kind of common themes you've had in terms of areas where people tend to be confused or have questions or that's you know, I, I say that again, Jimmy. How do you hear? It it was a selection tool, so I I wasn't gonna admit it while we were talking there, even though I know we're still live, and hopefully hopefully this will be edited out. But <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> being being a novice user to it, and and just trying to get comfortable with it. The one of the so I was making global adjustments all the time. I, you know because. I totally got the curves, and and I would get a, I would pick the mask that I want, uh, and I would go in and put a curve. But I couldn't. I was like, I just want this one thing, <laughs> and you know, it should be pretty simple to just go and and select the mask. It, but for some reason, it just took me forever to figure out how to really get granular with it with with the uh, with the selection. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of looking for that like one button that does everything, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I think that's one of those things where I, I, you know, struggle a little bit to say to people like, hey, the goal is not to get everything in like one step, but like maybe two steps. You go like most of the way for a lot of these images, right? And that's where I kind of do that multi-step thing. But the beauty of that is, um, I think once you wrap your head around, it, it's really not hard. It just it's it seems a little challenging at first, but it, it doesn't have to be. There was one other thing that we didn't get to ask you, maybe while you were doing your demonstration, but one of the other uh, individuals, Alex from the cohort, who couldn't join us today, he had a question specifically about trying to uh, leave us, uh, clone something out, and he said he was having difficulty. It was one of the questions that I had sent you. Uh, he, was, uh, he was saying that he had difficulty cloning out a twig or something and just wondered if there was some way to, to do it within Lumenzia uh, from your perspective that maybe he's missing. Um, you know, I haven't necessarily used it for um, cloning, more for like restricting, you know, so if I have a clone area, I could apply a mask to it. Um, the area where I run into that a little bit more is you do some layer adjustments, and then you go back and you want to clone something out, but your layer masks, you know, the actual luminosity masks were based on that bad twig. Right. And what people don't realize is you can go back to that layer you can click on the preview once you've corrected it, and then you can hit the mask button that will reapply the mask. So maybe you have like an L3 mask that shows the twig, then you kind of go back, you clone it out, then you can pull up the L3 preview and apply that to that same layer, and it fixes the twig in the, the luminosity mask. And that's a, a really quick way to deal with it, because the, the alternative is you build these layers, then you put this you know adjustment on top of that, which basically means that all your layers beneath are no longer non-destructive because they're kind of interlinked. So if you can yeah. you know, fix the mask, then that just it makes it easier to keep uh, tweaking. Go back to the source. <laughs> exactly. Um, hey, you guys had asked about uh, what's coming next. So do you want to see the other uh, new bit of uh, version 1.6? Absolutely. I will. Uh, I do. Yeah, for sure. That sounds great. Yeah, I'd be curious to, uh, to get your thoughts on this. So um, so you saw the range tool. Um, can you see my screen okay? Yeah. Okay. So um, let's go to a simpler image here. Um, so let's say we were doing a sky adjustment here. And I'm just going to pull up. All right. So let's say, well, yeah, we'll just throw this up. So if I use this as a, an example, uh, I'm making some changes here, and I want to fix this mask. And so, you know, I could do this a couple ways currently. I could go in here, and with my paintbrush, I could then, you know, maybe I want to add to it. 
So I can start, you know, painting in, you know, to bring in more of the mask. Or I could, you know, use black paint and I can start painting out the mask to get more of the original. Obviously, these are horrible looking adjustments, but you can see the, the change there. Or I could alt click on this mask. I could go in and do the same thing where I could, you know, black out the mask or I could lighten the mask or whatever I want to do. I mean, more likely I'd be doing things like fixing this, right? I mean, that would be a typical adjustment. But the problem is you're looking at the mask, you're looking at the image, you're not looking at both. And so what you're going to see in the new version is this split screen option. And let me uh, close these other windows to just kind of simplify things here. You click on split, and it's going to give you a split screen view. So you're looking at the mask and the image at the same time. So now I can go in and I start painting on this mask here. And as soon as I let go of my brush, real time, I see the adjustment on the image. Um, That's and amazing. Very cool. That's so cool. <laughs> and you can even kind of go in and sync these up. Uh, let's, oops, let's see here. Let me do this one more time. There we go. So, but I can um, move around wherever I need to be, so I can, you know, very quickly, you know, make those adjustments here. So when I'm trying to fix little things like this here, you know, fine detail work. I find that this really makes it easy to, you know, get the mask right by looking at this kind of detail, but then make sure I'm keeping an eye on what I'm actually doing to the image. That is, that would be so much more helpful because I mean, you know, when you are editing in there, I mean, you sometimes you do get lost and like, what exactly am I applying it to? Yeah, I, you know, I haven't done enough videos on it, but I do refine the masks a lot, you know, whether it's like a mask on a mask or uh, painting the mask um, or even at the preview stage with the orange layers where I'll adjust the curves that, that feed the mask. Um, but once you can start to tweak those masks, it's really like the sky's the limit. Now you have infinite control on what's selected, you know, in which parts of the image. Um, and that's when I think things just start to really look awesome. Can you show the dust? You have a button for dust. Yeah, let me uh, pull this back up here. So the dust is actually in the current version. Um, so with the uh, the dust option here, can you see my screen? Yep. So I've got these. So these are all visualizations up here. So L is going to show you the uh, luminosity, which is great for retouching. Uh, I can show an example like. You can sort of see there's like some weird cloud stuff going on here, and so if I uh, if I click on the luminosity, I get just a regular. This is just a preview of the luminosity, but if I click it again, it kind of boosts the the contrast on it. Or I could command click it, and now I can actually give it two points. So I can say you know here's the brighter one, and here's uh, the darker one, and now it's going to build this luminosity preview to really bring out that detail. So if I wanted to, I could now start to do um, cloning adjustments on this thing. You know, I can go in and, you know, I start making these adjustments. I can really see what I'm doing. You know, I can still look at the original image, um, but just for fixing errors like this, you know, streak in the sky, if I want to get rid of that, you know, I could just very quickly knock that out. And it's just a lot easier to see it there um, and obviously, you know, I would do this, you know, carefully. But um, so that was the the check luminosity. The uh, the check dust button um, is basically going to give you like kind of a solarized curve to help look for dust. So it's kind of an extreme, but you can see there's a little bit of a dust mark here. Some funny stuff here. If I click dust again, I get a few different variants. So I can click through, um, and you see like the artifact where I was editing here. So it's just a couple different ways to look for issues, and you can also command click this if you want to see it in black and white instead, if that's kind of your, your thing. Um, you know, so that dust spot right there, you know, is pretty obvious. You can go fix that. Um, and if you fix it in the raw, obviously that's better, but there's a lot of times when I find I just I miss something, and these just give me a couple of easy ways to, to go kind of seek and destroy on those problems. I so needed that last night. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a black and white photo, and uh, I have uh, dust on my 
on my sensor and I'm you know after a while after you start looking at an image for a while you're just like you know am I looking at a dust spot or am I looking at you know what's supposed to be there my eyes were getting tired and, and uh, <laughs> I, I could have definitely used that good to know yeah. about yeah Did you know better... oh go ahead I was gonna say the um, that check luminosity I've got an example on my website um, or on YouTube where uh, someone painted white on a white pillar and I didn't even notice it at first, but it's actually kind of a bad artifact, or I mean, it's real. It's in the image, but um, if you were to print a, a fine art print of this thing, you might miss it on screen, and then suddenly you realize in the final print, oh my gosh, there's this really bad paint job where it's like two different shades of white, um, you know, and it just helps you find little things like that so you can fix them. Yeah, what I was going to say is um, Kathy has some simpli simplistic images within her critique, and I was telling her that, you know, you should um, look at those images in black and white to see what's distracting, but actually that fe those two features right there would really help. Um, you know, you want to leave them in color, but just to get rid of those little nitpicky things that you don't realize because you get so involved with the um, image, sometimes color is distracting, especially when you're working with a simplistic image. So that's a great tool. I didn't even think about that with um, Kathy. Um, she left the hangout, but she was here earlier. And she's from, where, where is she from, Louisiana? She's down south. She photographs with alligators. <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> Uh -huh. Jamie, I'd sent you that YouTube link, and that's probably a good one to share because um, you know, we kind of hit a lot of topics, but on my YouTube channel, I've got a, a playlist of particular topics, and, and I think um, you, know, you guys have seen this tool. You've seen luminosity masking, so you can kind of go jump in the deep end of the pool. Um, you know, there's a lot of folks I've run into, like, you know, they kind of stumbled onto to, to this stuff, but they're really out of their depths. I mean, I get people who don't really understand masking all that well who suddenly want to jump into luminosity masking which is kind of mind-blowing to me I mean I, I did Photoshop for 13 years before I ever really tried it um, you know it's definitely the, the deep end of the pool <laughs> Wow so you do have a lot of uh, different because um, maybe to Janice's point we wanted to make sure that people knew how to get a hold of you and stuff and so I had a uh, so you're on Facebook and Google Plus. I mean, so you're on a lot of different social media. I mean, what is, and we obviously want people to go buy your application. I mean, I, I think it's great. I mean, like Janice said, she would have paid more. <laughs> but we'll, uh, you know, I mean, what what for sure do you want us to get out there, you know, so people are aware and, and uh, can find um, you? You know, uh, I think it's easy enough for people to find me when they get to my website. I think if you shared the, uh, the Lomenzia page, and the Lomenzia channel or playlist on YouTube, that gives them a good chance to kind of see what's there. Um, and you may want to add the, uh, the the page of like free luminosity masking stuff. I mean, I, you know, uh, if I can help someone, even if they're not interested in, in Lomenzia, you know, I'm, I'm excited to do that too. So maybe those three things, um, and all of them ultimately kind of link back and point back to me, so they, they should be able to find me. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Greg, for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, I uh, hope everyone has a great weekend, and uh, thanks again for the opportunity. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye.